Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Welcome. Listen, I have a freebie for you today and it's kind of time sensitive. However, the technique you're going to learn will be useful in any kind of a project that you do. And yes, you can use this with your Cricut machine. So let me show you how. Follow me to my desktop and let's get started. Okay, first of all, I'm going to give you the link to get the freebie. And like I said, it's just for today, I think. So scramble on over there and get it. But again, if you don't get this one or you don't see this today, there'll be many others like this that you can do the same thing with. So here it is, the one that I'm going to use. It's called Difficult Roads Lead to Beautiful Destinations. And you know, I, I really do believe that. Um, Eventually they do. But anyway, let's download this. It's free. I'm using Windows 10 and I'm using Google Chrome. So mine comes right down here on the lower left and I'll double click on it to open it. And then you'll notice it comes in as a zipped file. And we know that's this because it says extract all right here. So I'm going to click on extract all. And I'm just going to let it go to the file folder that it determines on its own. And I'm going to say extract. And it's going to be in my downloads actually. So now what I'm going to do is close this out and open up Silhouette Studio. Okay. And here in Silhouette Studio, I'm simply going to go to File and then merge because I want it to open in this same window that I just opened. Merge. And I'm going to go to my downloads. And here's the zipped file what, that I cannot use, but here's the one that I can use. Notice they're the same names. One just has a zipper and one does not. Use the one without. <laughs> All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and open up the PNG file. And it's going to come in a little tiny bit large for me, but that's okay because all I have to do is click on it and then I can use this little square down here in the lower right hand corner and push it up. Oh, try again. Push it up. There we go. Okay, so I can show you what we're going for. Let me scroll over this way where I've already done one. This is what we're going to be doing, putting a frame around this. So that would be nice on a shirt, or if you do reverse canvas, or if you like to do some wall art, or even if you like to do, you could smoosh this way down and use this for a, a scrapbook page or something like that. And of course you could change this from difficult roads to all roads or our roads or something like that. But let's go back over here now and let me show you how to put the um, little frame around it first. Oopsie. All right, there we go. So the first thing you're going to do once you have this in here, like I said, was I just made it smaller. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the offset tool, which looks like a, a star with an offset on it. I'm going to click on that to open the offset panel and say offset. Now, I know since I've already done this that a number 3.3 works really well for this situation. What I want to have happen is these offsets to meet, okay, so there's not all these gaps. So watch what happens when I change this over here by hitting the backspace on my keyboard, putting in a 3, and then hint hinting Enter. Watch the offset when I hit Enter. Okay, did you see how that went all the way around beautifully around my object? It's exactly what we want. So I'm going to click off, click on the image here and remove it for now. Here's the thing. All of these little things are going to cut out right now. I don't want them to cut out. I don't even need those. So what I'm going to do is click on this thing, come up here to Object, Release the Compound Path. What that did was it selected every single thing that made up this part of the image. But I don't want all of it selected. I want to deselect something. To do that, when I have a slew of stuff selected, all I have to do is hold down the shift key on my keyboard, hold it down, and click on the thing that I don't want to delete. So I don't want that outer edge to delete, or I don't want it selected. And see what it did? It deselected it. It's no longer in that selection box. So the things that are in that selection box, now I can simply hit delete on my keyboard, voila, they're gone. So that's what we want to begin with. Let's move this back over here and check it out. It's going to be really cool. 
To make the frame, all we have to do now is click on this and offset it again. So I'm going to come over here again to the offset panel, which is the star with an offset if it's not still open. And then I'll say offset and I'll just change it again to a 0 0.3 and hit enter. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select both of these things. I just drew a box. Did you see that? Select both by drawing a box. Then I'm going to come up here to object, make a compound path, and then I'm going to color it in black, just like that. And there we have our beautiful offset that works just like that. Isn't that cool? I just love it. Okay, you may be wondering, hey, that's great, Patty Ann, but how do I use this with my Cricut Maker or my Cricut Explore machine? Let me show you. So here's the one we're going to use right here. I'm going to delete this one because we don't need it anymore. It was just my sample to show you. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check and see how big this is. Now, I am going to make one of these on a canvas to show you how cute, how nice, classy it turns out. But just for now, I'm just going to show you this. Look at the width here. 9.802. So what I do for Cricut, so if I've made this the exact size I want because I know what size canvas I have or what size of a board I have and I want it to be the exact size for Cricut, what I would do is this. Now the first thing I would do for my Cricut machine before I use this at all is this. I would grab all of this and come up here to object, make it a compound path, if I don't make it a compound path, which makes the Cricut machine think all of these pieces are just one thing, when it goes over there, it will be a million little pieces, and we don't want that. So I'm going to say make it a compound path. did change its color to blue, but I can change it right back to black, no problem. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight it, come down here and look at the size. Notice the width. I always, always use the width. It's just something I've chosen to do. So I don't have to wonder, did I use the width? Did I use the height? I always use the width, and that's how I remember. But anyway, my width is 9.802. So what I would do is come up here to File, Save As, Save to Hard Drive, and I'm going to name it 9.802. That's the first part of the name I'm going to put in this. And then I'll just name it um, Difficult. D-I-F-I-C-U-L-T. I spelled it wrong. D-I-F-F-I-C-U-L-T. Roads for Cricut. Okay, and I'm going to save it as an SVG. It may tell me I already have it. Let's see. Difficult Roads for Cricut. I did. So I'll just overwrite that. And yes, I'll replace it. Okay. So now let's go over to Cricut and see how it's going to come in. So I go to Upload, and you can see I've been playing with it. <laughs> Upload an image, Browse, uh, Difficult, there it is, 9.802 Difficult Roads for Cricut. Open. There it is, looking beautiful. Say Save, and now just insert it. And there it is. It's perfect, except for that it's really small. It's only three and a half inches, a little less than three and a half inches wide. But we know how wide we need it to be because we designed this thing over in silhouette for the exact measurements that we need. And we put that in the name. So look right up here in the layers panel, 9.802. We don't have to remember anything. It's right there. So with the lock locked, I'm going to change the width to 9.802. 802, enter, and that's exactly the size we need it to be to fit. So all we would need to do now is just say make it, and it would automatically go on black vinyl just like this. We could uh, go ahead and cut it out. If, on the other hand, we were using HTV or heat transfer vinyl or iron on, all those mean the same thing, heat transfer, think of an iron, Iron on, obviously, or HTV stands for heat transfer vinyl. Anyway, if you're using heat transfer vinyl, what you could do right now, right here where it says mirror, click on mirror, and it mirrors it so that it will work perfectly with your machine. So that's how easy it is to use these things with Cricut. So let's check out back in Silhouette. I want to show you one more thing over there that you can use for your Silhouette Cameo 
or your Cricut Maker, Cricut Explorer. Hang on. Okay, here we are again in Silhouette, and this is not something I'd necessarily want to change, but you could change it if you wanted to. Let's say, for example, that you didn't like the font that they used for Difficult. What you could do is this. Right-click on this thing and say, Release the Compound Path. And then what I would do is scroll way in to get rid of the word Difficult, and I would just start grabbing these by drawing a box all around the word Difficult and hit Delete on my key. Whoops, I got too much stuff. So again, just be careful you don't get too much stuff. So I just want these things up here. So I'm going to try to draw just the box around this and hit delete. There we go. Now I'll scroll back out and you notice that the letters have gotten filled in. Well, we can fix that easily by grabbing everything again and coming up here to object, make a compound path. And it's back to the way we wanted it to be. So I could type in many roads or our roads or anything you can think of for different texts that you might like to be in here. But I'll just make it say difficult again with a different font. So I'll come over here to the left hand side and then come up here and click anywhere and just type in difficult. I guess I'll make it all caps. Difficult. And then what I can do is click off of this and click back on it and then just come over here and click something in my, oh I'm sorry, I need to come over here first to this a here and then I can click anything here once it's selected and I can go through here and see what other looks I might like. Now once this is selected, remember this is the text editing when it has the green box around it, the little four-headed arrow and the blue bar at the right. I'm going to click off and just click back on so there's just these little boxes around it. Then I'm going to come over here and I could just hit the down arrow on my keyboard and it will go through these different fonts just like this where I don't have to do all kind of things to see if there's something else I like better. So I would just go through all the fonts that I happen to have here to see if I like something better. So I'll pretend that I like something better. <laughs> oh, let's see. I'll just go with that one. So imagine I like this one better. What I could do is bring it over here and then of course resize it down into here. So it would work like that. And then I could click on this to highlight it and change it to black. Now while I'm doing this I do need to tell you guys if you have like a um, uh, a subscription somewhere say like to Tanner Bell stuff or whatever and you get his images you can certainly bring them into this and change them up any way you want to it's so easy to change things in silhouette software for any machine you have so this one here now let's be let me add one more thing to this so we know that we've changed it I'll add a um, asterisk if it'll work yeah difficult and then I'll so we'll know that this is the one I just did I'll put an asterisk at the end as well. Hold down my shift key and above the eight. There we go. So difficult road. So we'll just do it like that. So again, I'm going to grab all this stuff and come up here to make a compound path. Then I'm going to go to file, save as, and I'll remember the name, the number again, 9.802. Save to hard drive. 9.802 asterisk. I'm not sure how to spell it, <laughs> asterisk. I'll just call it that and I'll name it again as an SVG because I'm going to use this for my Cricut machine. So let's go back over to Cricut again and cancel this. Let's bring in another one, upload, upload an image, browse, asterisk. There it is, save. And so all this is doing is showing you that you can change the font, change the text, you know, change it to say anything you like over there and then just use it with your Cricut machine. Easy peasy, just like that. So this would, if I went to make it, it would make it on two different mats, obviously, because they're both big. So that's how easy this is. Now stay tuned, I'm going to show you my final project. Yeah. 
Okay, hopefully you'll be able to hear me well enough. My machine is over there cutting this right now, and someone had asked me this question, so I thought this would be a perfect time to tell you this. Let's go back over to this one. Where is it? This one. So what I have is I have a canvas that is 20 by 24 inches large. So what I do is I get a box, I draw out the box, and then I make it the exact size of my uh, item that I'm going to put my vinyl on. So in this case, it's 20 inches wide and hit enter by 24 inches tall and hit enter. Obviously, I'm going to have to make that a lot smaller so we can see it. I'm going to put this on here. Before I do though, I don't want this image. Let's right click and bring it to the front. I actually don't want this image to go all the way from edge to edge like this because I don't think that would look good. So what I'm going to do is draw another box inside of here, or what I could do is offset this. So I'm gonna click on offset, internal offset, and I'm gonna offset it by 2.5 inches, like that. And then I'm gonna change that offset while it's still selected to white, because that's the area in which I can work. So now if I bring this over here, I can make it a tiny bit bigger and still fit. And what I actually did, I believe on mine, was I stretched it this way so it would work nicely. And then skinnied it up a little, whoops. Skinnied it up just a little bit. All right, there we go. So now uh, I'm gonna move these things out of the way. I no longer need these, but look, it's not gonna fit on my mat. So I'm gonna use a Cricut mat. With my Cameo, I could use no mat or my Cricut mat. And I'll just go with that because then you'll know you can do the same thing in Cricut. So I'm gonna come up here to my page setup and I'm gonna change my cutting mat to 12 by 24 and I'm gonna change my media size to 12 by 24 as well. Still though, if I try to put this on here, it's not gonna fit, right? So I'm gonna cut it in half and let's grab this and grab in here like this. I'm gonna come over here. Oh, it looks like I've already done this one. Then I'm gonna come over here and get the knife tool and I have the knife tool on outline, freehand, and I have auto apply unchecked. So I would just come over here and while I'm doing freehand, I'm just gonna hold this down, keep holding my mouse key down while I go all the way over to the other side, like that. And now I have to hit apply because when I, once I apply it now, I can take these pieces apart. But before I take them apart, let's scroll back in. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and group it and move them apart and then grab the things at the top up here and group them. Now again, if I'm using this for my silhouette machine, I don't need to do this, but for Cricut then what I would do is I would make it a compound path and again, change its color so it's not a bunch of little pieces over there. And I would do the same thing to this piece, right click, make it a compound path, and of course, again, change its color. But now, you'll notice what I can do is this. If I go like this, scroll out, I can bring this one, twirl it around like this, and it'll fit perfectly on the mat. When I'm done with that one, then I can do this one, and I'll use transfer tape to put it onto my project. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you grab this freebie and make this really super cute project. Bye y'all, thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up and the bell and check out my links down below. I appreciate it when you use them. It helps to keep this channel going. So thanks again, bye-bye.